Bradley Hope, you've been covering real estate in the uh, UAE for the past uh, year and a half now, since the National was founded, um, and you've attended four cityscapes. How does uh, this one differ from the others? Well, each one sort of takes place, I mean, it's sort of, if you look at them each, they kind of, they show the evolving real estate markets of both Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Um, last year's cityscape in Dubai was, there was still this sort of sense of a looming issue that was about to be dealt with in Dubai. And uh, it, it seemed like they almost tried to, to jumpstart the economy before it started sputtering with these sort of large announcements and things. And this year, um, as much as it's a little bit quieter and a little bit sparser, you do get the sense that the worst feels like it's behind us. So that's sort of, I think people are sort of meeting each other, trying to figure out uh, you know, what are, the, are going to be the issues that shape the economy for the next year and um, you know, trying to just prove that they're still here, they've made it through this rough period. So I think that's the big change at this point. One of the characteristics of previous cityscapes, for me anyway, was that there were so many non-existent projects, uh, off, the so-called off-plan projects, where you had a beautiful mock-up and renderings, never a photograph. Um, have you seen anything like that this year? Well, if you look at a few of the developers, the major developers like Aldar, uh, Dubai Properties, some of the big guys, they're trying to show the progress of their projects that they've announced previously. So like you say, that is, that is a big change. Um, they're trying to show updates rather than announcing new, ever more fantastic projects. And, and uh, so I think that basically comes alongside the end of the off-plan market. You know, There was something going on here in the UAE, which you rarely see in the world, where people buy and sell property you know, five, six times before even a, a spade has hit the, the soil. So, um, I think that's definitely over, and as a result, the developers are no longer catering to that sort of demand that, that used to exist. And now, all the buyers who've previously bought, they just want to know, how far is my project along? You know, What's going on with my project? Is this a real real estate market? Well, there's, there is still demand out there, I think. I, just from my reporting, there is demand out there for some types of... People, people want to live in places like JBR. They want to have a house, you know, somebody maybe from Russia or Iran or a local person. Um, the, the, the issue, I guess, is are the necessary things in place for that market to be able to, you know, actually act on, their, on this demand, which is, you know, mortgage issues, visa issues. There's sort of a lot of obstacles uh, that are still in the way for that potential demand to start actually, those people to start buying homes. If you were in a position, which none of us are, <laughs> as expatriates especially, uh, to uh, kind of fix a few things, what, what are the first things you would fix here? Well, it, it's difficult to say that because, you know, with every problem that I see, I know that there's many explanations for that problem, you know. So the visa issue, it's not as simple as you can just turn a switch and suddenly the visas change. They have, they have a lot of other concerns underway. You know, they want to figure out who they want to allow to stay in their country for permanent, you know, or long periods of time. But I think definitely, you know, in Donald Trump Jr. mentioned this yesterday as well in his one of his uh, after uh, a Q and A after his speech, where he said that this is really these are the guys that are taking a leap of faith to come to your country and try to make a living here and contribute to the economy, and these are the same people that you're telling, you know, you can't stay here longer than a year, or you can be here every six months, you have to renew it. It does seem like that needs to be addressed. That sort of the visa issue, and the second thing probably would be the um, the strata law. Um, for a lot of these large projects, there's these maintenance fees that are coming due every year, and they can really be a make or break issue for a buyer. If you're looking at paying tens of thousands of dirhams extra than you thought you were going to be paid, it, that's really going to kind of hamper your desire to live in those places. And so we still haven't seen the law actually, uh, the regulations for the law promulgated yet. We've only seen the official announcement. So that's basically holding that part up as well. Another part of that same problem is uh, tenants associations. Are there any effective tenants associations here? Well, I would say they're effective. They're, they're all informal, officially, because there's, there is no law, there's no regulation yeah. so to support them. So they can't exist officially. So they, yeah. can't, they can't be recognized officially, but they can form and they still have power. And one of the ways they have power is they can create a website where they can voice their grievances. They can talk to reporters and you know, get their story out there. So they, I mean, they have proven to, to you know, have some impact on, on their negotiations with the master developers and things through these other you know, recourses, rather than the, the legal backing that you would expect when the regulations come out. Sure. Last question. Um, do the stories that you and your colleagues at the National or other journalists in the market write uh, that, that 
present problems. Uh, do those do those stories affect the uh, affect any kind of change in the people who are involved? Say the builders, developers, bankers, whatever. Well, I mean, you know, definitely the role of the media in the UAE is a increasing one, uh, maybe even compared to a few years ago. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that everything. That if we write a story that we uh, highlight an issue, that it's immediately followed up by uh, somebody in the government, but it does bring that topic to the forefront. People are discussing it. You know, if you put an article out there, it becomes a topic of discussion, and it, it filters its way to the right people. I think, I hope, and uh, and and uh, it's up to them. You know, they have a lot of inputs coming into them. They have their own economic data. They have other advisors, and the media is just one of the players in this whole sort of um, constellation that's underway when they make a decision. So 